Hi, my name is Margret. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to JDBC. JDBC stands for Java Database Connectivity. It allows you to connect the Java application to a data source, like a database or a spreadsheet. It is an API that is used to connect to a data source, send queries and update statements, and retrieve and process the results. JDBC uses drivers to connect to the database. JDBC is not the only way to connect to the databases in Java. Another way would be, for example, JPA, a standard for object relational mapping. However, here we focus on JDBC only. This graphic gives you a bigger picture. You can see that we have the Java application on the left. That is where you write your own classes and that's where you write the code to connect to a database, query, update databases, retrieve results. And you do that by using objects and methods from the JDBC API. And the JDBC API connects to the data source using drivers. Depending on the data source, it needs a different driver. So for SQLite, there's a special SQLite driver. For JavaDB, there's a special JavaDB driver. Let's look at the different data sources. One thing I want to point out is DBMS. That is an abbreviation you see every once in a while. It stands for Database Management System. A DBMS handles the way data is stored, maintained, and retrieved. There are different types of database management systems. In this class, we use relational database management systems, also called RDBMS. They store information in a tabular form. So examples of relational databases would be SQLite, MySQL, JavaDB, etc. Now we are going to have a closer look at JavaDB. Again, we are going to look at the bigger picture and you can see JavaDB is one of the possible data sources we could connect to. JavaDB is an open source Apache Derby database written in Java. It is easy to use. It has a small footprint, which means it doesn't require a lot of memory. And it has a full feature set and is fully transactional. It also has write once, run anywhere portability, and it provides a standard SQL interface and the JDBC compliant driver. JavaDB can be used in server mode or in embedded mode. In server mode, the application accesses the database using the Derby network server. In embedded mode, the Derby database engine runs within the JVM, the Java virtual machine, of the application. Let's have a closer look at the embedded mode. For embedded Derby applications, you need to use the embedded Derby driver. It always has the same form embedded driver, And you also need a database connection URL of the following form. JDBC colon derby colon. That is the JDBC protocol specification for the derby driver. Then it is followed by the database name. And optionally, there could be one or multiple derby database connection URL attributes. Derby translates those attributes into properties. So alternatively, those attributes could also be set in a properties object. There is one more thing I want to point out, and that is the following. Two JVMs, two Java virtual machines, cannot connect to the same database in embedded mode. That means if you want to share a database between multiple applications, don't use JavaDB in embedded mode. You could use JavaDB in server mode, 
you could use a different Deva source altogether, but ChavaDB in embedded mode would not allow you to do that. Again, I am uh, looking at the bigger picture and this time I am going to have a focus on the Java application. When we write a Java application that works with a database, we need to connect to the database. Then typically we want to update the database, either make changes or query the database. That means retrieve some data sets from the database and then we might want to process those results. So here is an example how this could look like. We start by creating a connection. You can see here we uh, get a connection from a class called driver manager and we pass to our connection the database connection URL. And again, you can see right here, oops, right, uh, you can see at the beginning the JDBC protocol specification followed by the database name. In this case, I didn't specify any attributes. Uh, the next thing I do is I create a statement and this statement is based on my connection. Notice I don't provide any information when I create a statement. So this statement is really uh, allowing me do, to do a whole variety of different things uh, in connection with the database I specified, with the database I connected to. And in this case, I'm going to use this statement object that I have to execute a query. And the query I'm executing is I'm selecting whatever from a given table. I just call it my table here. And if this would be, let's say, star, select star, that just means everything, just select all the rows from my table, that's what I would get. And they would be returned in a result set. And I could use the method next to advance from one row to the other one uh, through my result set, and then I can process all those rows, all those data records, and do whatever I want to do with them.